This portion of WCW Prime Wrestling is brought to you by Twix. With chewy caramel milk chocolate and that great cookie crunch, it's time out for Twix. All right, fans, welcome back to WCW Prime Cruise on the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes and Dusty... You know, Japan has produced a tremendous uh, variety of wrestlers, almost every one of them incredibly tough, but some of them don't seem to have the size. I mean, you've got guys like Antonio Inoki, the giant Baba who you have faced, but the type of, uh, of viciousness and meanness backed up by uh, about 260 pounds of Kurosawa, very rare for a Japanese wrestler. Well, look at it. No, I was just lifting. That was some You great... were thinking of the old no. days against Baba and Anoki. No, Anoki, you know, Anoki wasn't a big guy, but he was but he was strong and powerful and great shape. And, and this guy here, if you said, has all them things, them tangibles to be great. You know, he even though all them nerve holes and stuff, and, and he can break arms, and he can put you away, and we see him a lot on the prime. We see him often on the prime because he knows to make his way here at WCW with a big boy to play. He got to get victory, victory, victory after victory. We getting up for that big main event. Clubbing going on. Whoa. Prime. Move match of the week coming up. Nasty boy pulling in me. We're going to put our chairs back because they're going to be fighting everywhere. Oh, man. We're not. You're right. In fact, uh, our producer, Diana, she can maybe get her head back to the fact that she's not in, on vacation anymore. Maybe she can get us a new location away from that new match. She have brought me some beautiful sandals back from Istanbul. Did you see them? No. Did you get your sandals? What do you figure I'm going to get from her? I, well, you're back on the show this week. That's my gift. Yes. I get you. I can <laughs> take my job. You are. I get you. Yes. I, you know, I poke fun a lot, but I guarantee you nobody's more knowledgeable or, 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 or better equipped to do the prime with me than Christopher Cruz. Very, very famous man now that he's running around with me. I do bask in your glory. Kier Sawa is basking in the glory of Buck Quatermain because he has really taken him to task. Interesting week in television history, Dusty. Nearly 50 years ago, both Superman and Lucille Ball debuted on television. They have been with us for 50 years. Both of them were red heads. Were they really? Yes. Oh, Superman had a red cape. Oh, here we go. A chop there from Kurosawa, and Buck Quatermain's got to have a red chest before this match is over. Oh, another one. Man, breaking the capillaries and the packs with those reverse knife-edge chops. Buck Quatermain never got off the never got off the blocks here on the prime. He never really got anything going from the get-go. As you said, you had built up the fact of the size and speed, the nerve holes and everything of Kurosawa, and he surely has taken this thing. I mean, I'm talking about 95% of this match right here on prime. And he begins his uh, destruction, eventual destruction, of that left arm. You know, interesting that that hole that he has, that Japanese submission armbar, also very similar, in, at least in terms of pain, if not in terms of application, to the code red by Sergeant Craig the Pitbull Pittman. That, uh, that's out of design. Pittman spent so much time in the Orient. It's out of design. Uh, uh, he went to the same schools that a guy like Kurosawa. I would love to see a match in the old days, and, and, I, and this is better nowadays, so don't get me wrong out there in the old days if somebody is listening in the office. But I mean in the old days, I would love to see the match Pittman against Kurosawa. And the only way you can win is by your hole or by submission and use the guy's hole. Yeah, and I and quick that, match on yes, yes. No, no, just submission. Yeah. You know what I mean? It certainly would be interesting. But Quatermain come back strong on him right there, but then he got cut off, made a mistake, and of course I'm picking him up now like a sack of potatoes and going to de de deliver him. Oh, man, Ooh. shoulder buster. Quatermain is in great shape. He really is a, a very respected well, young he man. He's in good shape right now. No, not against Kurosawa. Oh, okay, he, he's going to do Ooh. it again. Wow. Quatermain knows the pain he is in for. Oh, look at that. Oh. I got him, I believe. Wow, I believe I heard that crack. That snap crackle and pop right there. He uncled him. He uncled him. Ooh. As soon as that move was on, that hold was on, Kurosawa knew he was victorious over Quartermain. Let's keep in mind the very move that broke the Road Warrior Hawks arm just a few months ago. The many Road Warriors, Warriors ago. Many months ago, the Road Warriors now back, and uh, Hawk certainly looks to be 100%, but I find it interesting, Dusty, that Hawk never really got his revenge 
on Kurosawa. Well, he's got his plate full right now. I'm talking about Hawk and the Steiners and all that situation that's going on with the Steiner brothers being back at WCW. Caught him right there in a little old hook, got him back in a little suplex type situation right there. But what he did really bad was get that arm to crank in, cranked on it on two occasions, nearly broke it off the first time, went for it again right here as you see, and takes him down, comes up on it, and Uncle's Buck Quartermain right here on the prime. We'll take a two-minute break. When we come back, we'll hear from the Disco Inferno. We'll also see BK Wall Street, Hugh Morris, and a lot more. So don't go away. We're back in a moment.